I don't know where I am. And he's like, where am I? Nothing is familiar. And he also realizes he doesn't know who he is. Okay, I'm going to start my series now on this book, The Forgotten Door. And one of the reasons why I chose this book is because it's it's a favorite book of mine, if, you know, in, in terms of childhood books go. Um, I remember when I was in fifth grade, we had to give book reports. And one of my classmates, I remember giving a book report on this specific book and I thought it was very interesting so I read it you know after that and it's always been intriguing to me so I hope that you also find it intriguing and interesting. Um, just a little background for the story it was written in 1965 so it takes place in in that general era and a lot of times these books will have a blurb on the back of it a, kind of like a very um, very short summary of what the book's about, so I'll just read that for you to give you an idea of the flavor of this book. So it says, Far from home. John has lost his memory. He can't remember who he is or where he comes from. He only knows he fell through the forgotten door to the strange planet Earth, and he is in great danger. Injured from his fall, he has to find someone who will help him. Through his extraordinary power to read people's minds, John makes friends with a local family. But then rumors of his existence get back to the army, and John realizes that the family is in danger too. Time is running out. He must find the secret passage quickly, or he may never get home again. So that gives you an idea of the... The, the very basic outline of the book. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the first chapter in this episode. And this first chapter is called, He is Lost and Found. Alright, so the main character in this book is a boy named Little John. And as the chapter opens, he is with friends and family on a hillside somewhere, and they're watching shooting stars. Shooting stars is another name for meteorites. So they're watching shooting stars, and everyone's just caught up in the beauty and amazement of the, of the shooting stars. And Little John takes a step back to get a better view or whatever, and he falls through a hole. And he is astonished because he's been in this area his whole life. He's never had any problem. You know, he went out playing in the fields or whatever. He never had any issues. And all of a sudden, he steps on a place where he's known his whole life. And he falls through. And he's astonished. And he didn't realize what happened. But at, at the last minute, he, or at the last second, he realizes... Oh, it must be the old door. It must have opened up somehow. And but that realization comes too late and he's falling. He can't stop his fall and he gets hit in the head and he passes out. So then sometime later, we don't know how long, but sometime later he woke up. And he has no memory of anything. He has no idea what happened. He doesn't know where he is or anything. He can't remember a single thing. He knows that he hurts. He feels kind of achy like you would if you had fallen somehow. He got all banged up and stuff. So he hurts from that. And he might he would have been a little cold, but he had a thick jacket on and stuff like that. So he's okay with that. So he looks around and nothing is familiar. He's, he, he sees he's in some, some kind of cave or something between two rocks, the tall rocks on the other side, but he doesn't know where he is. And he hears the sound of a brook somewhere, some water running in a brook, and so he, he realizes that he's thirsty. So 
he crawls over to the water to get some drink. He can't really move very well because he was hurt in the fall. So he takes a good drink and kind of refreshes himself a little that way. And then he realizes, I don't know where I am. And he's like, where am I? Nothing is familiar. And he also realizes he doesn't know who he is. So obviously the fall has given him amnesia. He doesn't, he, he looks around, all the plants, all the animals are, are strange to him. The, the, the area, the hills and, and everything, everything is strange. So, of course, he, he finds that thought very disturbing. He's like, I don't know where I am. I don't know, I don't know anything and I'm hurt. So he tries to get up and start walking, but of course his, his ankle hurts and stuff. And he, he, he tries running, but then he realizes, wait, it's, it's too steep. There's too many rocks and things. I can't really run. I better take it easy. And the more he looks around, the more he realizes that nothing is familiar. He looks at the plants, the plants are not familiar, the flowers are not familiar, the trees are not familiar. Some things are almost kind of familiar, they're very similar to something that he kind of recalls, but it's not exactly the same. So he's trying to put all this together. It's like a big, big mystery, big puzzle to him. And he, he, um, he, he, without even realizing it, he starts reaching out and he, he senses some animals through his uh, mind reading powers. He, he senses that there are animals and stuff around. So subconsciously, without even thinking about it, he just starts reaching out and he realizes, wait, the animals are afraid of me for some reason. He's like, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. So eventually, through his mind reading abilities, he makes friends with a doe and her fawn. They, they're, they're a little cautious about him because they look at him and they see a human so they know that you know humans shoot animals and stuff like that. So, so the, they're a little cautious but they kind of make their way to him and he's like, don't be afraid, I'm not going to hurt you. And he's like, can you tell me where I am? I don't know where I am. But of course the animals can't, can't talk to him. So so he, he, even though the, the animals don't talk, he can still kind of sense what's going on in their mind. So he realizes that the doe and her fawn are hungry. So they, so he's like, okay, I will follow you. You go down into wherever and I'll follow you. So they go down, they're on a hill somewhere and they go down into the valley. He follows them there. Um, and of course, because his his knee is banged up, his ankle is sprained, he has a tough time walking. So he he mentally tells the doe, you know, please slow down. I can't move so fast. So they make their way down the hill and, and into the valley, and he starts seeing some places that are cultivated. So in other words, he starts seeing you know farmers' fields and stuff like that, and he's like, that seems kind of familiar and fields and cultivated things, that means that there's going to be people around somewhere. So hopefully I can find somebody that will help me. And meanwhile, that he's following the doe, and the doe stops at the edge of the field, kind of smelling the air, air currents. And, and little John is like, okay, well, I smell the, the, the rich dirt and everything. Well, it turns out that there is a man with a rifle and his intent is to shoot the deer and through his mind reading abilities John realizes that the deer is in danger so mentally he sends out a warning to the deer you know run away and so the deer the deer leaves and with their fawn and, and just at that moment the, the guy shoots so the deer just got a little grazing but but of course the man's um, shot was ruined. And this man sees John 
and he starts yelling at John. What are you doing? You ruined my shot, you, you stupid kid. And, um, and of course, little John doesn't know English. He has no idea what the man is saying. All he knows is that, you know, through his mind reading ability, he knows that the man is very angry and very hateful. And he doesn't understand why would this man be so angry? Why is he yelling at me? Why did he try to shoot the deer? Or why did he try to shoot that animal? The animal wasn't doing anything to him. So he, he had never experienced anything like this. And so little John starts to get mad. And then he's like, wait, that's not going to solve anything. So he tries to run away. And then the man says, hey, where are you going? And so he's like, the man just starts to chase after him and little little John tries to run away and he would have made it except his you know his leg or his knee and his ankle were hurting from the fall and and it turns out that there was a barbed wire fence covered up in some of the some of the undergrowth and John gets caught in that and because of that the man is able to grab hold of John and stop him from running and he continues to yell at little John who are you what are you are you some kind of Cherokee what are you doing around here you ruined my aim I was trying to get that deer and John has no idea what the man is saying and then there's a, a truck off to the side and a ugly woman comes out of the truck so and and John sees her and he realizes that mentally you know she's just as angry and hateful as and ugly as this man and so the man and his wife are arguing between themselves you know who's this strange kid i don't know he looks like an indian no he's not an indian look at his clothes his clothes are weird maybe he's foreign so they argue back and forth over this boy and then finally the the woman asks john who are you where are you from and of course little john he doesn't know english he he all he knows is that I've got these ugly people, these mean people yelling at me. And then the, the lady, or the woman, she gets mad because he's not answering her. So, well, if you can't talk, I'm going to slap that answer out of you. And she tries to slap him. But, of course, because he can read mind, he read minds, he anticipates that, and he rolls away. So she doesn't get to slap him. And just by, you know, avoiding that hit, that caused the man to lose his grip on John. And so then John was able to get free from the man and run away. And of course, now he knows about the barbed wire fence, so he avoids that. And, and it turns out, in addition to his mind reading abilities, he's somehow able to lighten his feet so he can run more quickly. And he's able to completely escape the mean, mean man. And the ugly woman, he keeps on running, 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 so till he's far enough away he can take a break. So he escapes them. By this time, the doe and the fawn that he had been friends with, they're gone. He has no, no idea where they are. He misses them, and he's been running, and his ankle hurts, and he's just overwhelmed at this point. He's He's lost his memory. He's in a strange place. He has no friends. He tries to, he, he sees some people, but the people are not at all helpful. They start yelling at him and, and he has no idea why. And he's hungry. It's been probably at least, you know, a number of hours since he's eaten. He's just overwhelmed. And he, of course, he's just a boy. He's probably around 10 or 12 years old, somewhere around that age. So he just starts to cry. And I think any of us would if we were in that situation, right? But then he realizes, wait, this is not going to solve anything. I have to keep moving. I have to find someone who will help me. So, so he gets up and keeps on moving, but now he knows that, okay, there are people here, but I have to be careful about whom I look to for help. Not everyone is going to be nice. Not everyone's going to be friendly. 
So he has to be very careful. So he's making his way through the through the forest and fields and whatever, and he sees so many animals and plants and things that he has never seen before. So, like one of the things that he sees is he sees a snake. He sees a rattlesnake, and he hears the with the with the rattle. And he realizes through his mind reading abilities that that the animal is is dangerous so he doesn't touch it but he's still kind of curious and he's like that creature i haven't seen it before but it i have heard of something like that so he's thinking about that and then he thinks back also about the 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 truck that the woman came out of he doesn't know what a truck is just like he doesn't know what a snake is but the idea of these things sounds kind of familiar to him like he's heard of them before even if he hasn't seen it so he's thinking about this there's there are a number of things that he hasn't seen before but they seem kind of familiar so he's trying to put all this together and so he continues walking and his foot or his ankle is really bothering him so he takes a knife he didn't realize that he had a knife but he takes a knife and he starts to make take some wood or branch or stick and make a walking stick out of it to help him walk in, in this rough terrain because it's hilly and rocky and everything and it, it's very difficult to walk in especially if you have a sprained ankle so he takes his time walking down into the valley trying to find somebody that can help him or whatever, trying to find food. He's like, well, there should be berries around somewhere, but he hasn't seen anything. And so he's walking throughout most of the day and the sun starts setting and he realizes it's going to be dark soon. Night is coming. Night is coming. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day. I don't know where I am. I don't know who I am. What am I going to do? So he's like, I don't know what to do. And um, he, he can sense that there's, you know, still wild creatures nearby. He can kind of read that, read their minds and, and pick that up. But, you know, they can't really help him. They just provide a little comfort in that. So then he hears an engine. He hears a car off in the distance. And he realizes, okay, there's more people here. And then he remembers, well, those last people that I met, they weren't helpful at all. They were very mean. So he's mentally kind of try to read their minds, see what kind of people there are, they are. And he realizes the car that he hears, he, he, he's, not, he's not comfortable with them, so he stays away from them. And he he hears several several cars pass by, and each time he tries to read, you know, read their vibe and trying to find out what kind of people they are. And each time he realizes, no, I better stay away from these people. That I, I I don't trust them. I don't. My gut instinct tells me that this is not good. And there is even a a man on a horse that comes by. And he likes the horse, and the horse senses senses little John's presence. But he's like, well, I, little John is thinking, well, I can't call out to the horse because then the man will find me, and I don't trust this man. So it's getting darker, getting darker, and he 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 mentally he he's he knows that there are several people that have come by, but none of them are helpful. And then finally. At last, he hears another another car or truck approaching, and once more he reaches out mentally to try to see what kind of people these are. And these people, he realizes, ah, they're nice people. They're friendly. They will help me. I can trust them. So he goes, he because see when he he um when he heard these other cars and stuff come by, he was kind of hiding because he didn't want to show himself. But now with this last last bunch of people in this in this truck, he realizes, I can trust them. I, I will be safe by them. So he comes out of hiding and he goes down by the roadside so they will 
they will meet him. And that is where chapter one ends. So that's it for chapter one. Uh, chapter two is about he gains a home. So we will continue this story, this paraphrasing of the story in the next episode. And I hope you like it. I hope you are looking forward to the next installment. Don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe and share it with your friends. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.